All right, ladies and gentlemen, start it the way you end it, right? The uh, epoxy should be dry in this nose cone. It's funny, it's really flimsy in there, but... Uh oh Hopefully it's not a giant pain to get it to line up with my bulk plate here. So that means today we're ground testing the old iris here. I still have a few more things I need to take care of first. I could just tell you but how about I show you? That's right, guys and gals, it is once again voiceover time. So sit back, relax, and watch me struggle to get all the rivets that I put into the upper airframe section out of my coupler. There's a lot that could be said about this situation, but I'm going to go with the rivets are so well attached that it's going to be an issue for the uh, airframe to come off of it. So that's a positive light I'm putting on this, and that's what we're going to go with. I don't think it's going to come apart. It should be pretty good. Now, of course, in the last video when I was drilling holes in my bulk plates for my electronics bay, I forgot to put holes in for both my U-bolts and holes for my E-matches to run through, which are pretty essential if you'd like your deployment charges to uh, deploy. Now, the paint job on the iris makes everything pretty easy to get in a straight line, considering the body lines line up perfectly with the center of the fins. However, to keep everything scale, which I was very meticulous about with the paint job, I had to paint some silver down onto the airframe, which made it a little bit difficult to get everything lined up. So I eyeballed some green masking tape so I could, uh, you know, roughly have it about straight in line with everything else for my shear pin. If you're unfamiliar, a shear pin is simply a nylon screw. The ones I'm using for this rocket are 4-40, which is pretty big. Typically, you'll use 2-56, but it is a very big rocket, so I went up a bit in size. Effectively, their purpose is to keep the rocket together until you want it to not be together anymore. They keep the nose cone on and the fin can attached to the coupler until your black powder ejection charge forces them apart, shearing the screws, hence the name, shear pins. Now we're on to creating ejection charges, which I've made a video on before, but I felt it was worth leaving this in because these are undoubtedly the biggest ejection charges I've ever made in my life. Our starting point is a hefty six grams of 4F black powder. And to put everything in perspective here, I think the biggest I've ever flown before was four gram. Uh, this is an old school Curtis gel tip nose cone. And if this hits the ground hard enough, it's just gonna break the whole tip off of that nose cone. So, you know what? If you're ground testing and you're using an SD's igniter or a launcher, uh, sometimes the launcher will fire the E-match on just pushing the test light in because they're so low resistance, so be wary of that. We've had that happen a time or two. All right, so as long as I don't have the E-matches backwards, that should be the nose one. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, good Lord. If you're curious about the oh good lord response, it's because that was six grams of black powder. Like I mentioned, the biggest charge I've ever made, and it was not enough to throw the nose cone off of this rocket, which is absolutely insane to me. But there is good news. Six grams was more than enough for the fin can. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, it's... All right. Look at that. Well, that worked. Worked might just be the understatement of the century as it tossed it about 15 feet apart, but I'm going to run a 6 gram main and 8 gram backup because I have about 60 feet of shock cord to work with, so it's better to be a little excessive than not separate the thing and have it come in ballistic. This is a big rocket, and I don't want anyone getting hurt. We still have to address the charge not being big enough for the nose cone, though. It not only takes a village to fly this rocket, it takes like 20 people to ground test it, so... Thanks to my dad and my two brothers for helping me with that one. Um, when we put the nose back on, it was really fighting. I put a pressure relief hole in it, but I might just make that hole bigger. Because I just find it real hard to believe that six grams was enough to throw that whole ensemble 20 feet. Quiet on set, please. But, uh... <laughs> Not blast that. Yeah. <clears throat> so I feel like it might have just been pulling the nose back. Vacuum. Just make that hole bigger. I don't know why I put it there. That's like the first thing people are going to look at is the decal. I guess we can just mess with it. I could put another one in there and 
we'll be able to tell if it's fighting it still. I'm going to make another six gram charge because I just refuse to accept that that's not big enough. What I think happened was my parachute or shock cord was covering my one small vent hole that I put in there. So I think with some more conscious packing and making sure we got proper ventilation so the nose cone's not uh, being held on by a vacuum effect, I think it'll do it. I truly was hell bent on believing that six grams was more than enough to throw the nose cone off a seven and a half inch rocket. So I built another six gram charge we carefully reassembled everything and uh, don't look if you're a skydiver or anything to that nature because you're about to see one of the worst parachute packing jobs in the history of mankind probably, but I got it pretty small and I'm happy with that. I made the giant parachute tiny. I don't want to. So after further modifications to my vent holes, I actually added another one and made them both quite a bit bigger than they were before, so I was feeling pretty confident about my six gram charge being more than enough to blow the thing apart. And five, four, three, two, one. Well, f me, I was wrong. Insert some philosophical comment about the scientific method and how important it is to do this kind of testing here to overturn the uh, angriness that I had that I was incorrect. But begrudgingly, I made myself an eight gram charge, stepping it up another two grams over the largest charge I've ever made, and lo and behold. Four, three, two, one. Yeah, I'll do it. You're correct, past me, that will in fact do. Now it looks a lot less exciting than the fin can separation, but you can see the bundle of red Nomex there. That means the parachute did come out with the nose cone. What I'll probably end up doing is putting a small pilot chute right up against the nose cone just to ensure as long as the nose cone comes off, it's going to pull everything out. All my recovery gear will come out because this rocket is heavy enough that if it hits the ground hard, it's probably going to cause some damage no matter how well I built it. That being said, I am going to run a 10 gram backup charge for the main chute because if you can't blow it out, you better blow it up. Well guys, quite frankly, I can't believe I'm saying it, but my seven and a half inch iris, about eight years after I started construction on it, is finally ready to fly. I think the plan is I'm gonna do a six gram primary, eight gram backup for the Apogee charge. We'll do eight gram for the main and 10 backup for that as well. Big big charges, I've never made black powder charges that big before, but uh, I've never flown a rocket this big before. So, I uh, look forward to uh, learning and figuring out what we figure out because uh, this isn't gonna be the biggest rocket on this channel anymore. Hopefully within the next year or so. Uh, my buddy Taylor and I have something. That's all I'm gonna tell you about for now. We'll get to that when we cross it. Um, if you're curious about what else I got going on, if this isn't exciting enough for you, um, the next video should be me building the end motor for this. And then I've got the LDRS video series coming up, which should be after that. And that's probably going to be a few videos because I'm going to be there all four days shooting video all day, every day, except for Saturday, I'll be flying this. Finally going to fly. I don't want anyone to miss it. So we'll get it ready in 2220 Dark Matter. Saturday at LDRS. If you'll be at LDRS, come say hi. I think I'm gonna bring some Rocket Vlog stickers out there that I'll probably sell for a couple bucks or just put on my table and you throw whatever you want in the bucket. It'll go towards making more videos. So, um, but if that's not satisfying enough for you, I have a 54 millimeter minimum diameter project I'll be starting right after this. I wanna hit 20,000 feet because I never have before. I'm gonna fly an L1000 uh, down in Argonia for Airfest. And I also have a couple upscales that I need to build, as well as this upscale I need to finish. I got a uh, eight inch V2 coming from a uh, composite warehouse that I plan on setting up for night flights. I like to fly it on an L900 at night with uh, some LEDs. So we got, we got a lot of stuff coming. So I appreciate the subscriptions. I appreciate everybody uh, buying merch at rocketvlogs.com. I've been thinking about doing a Patreon, 
So let me know what you guys think about doing a Rocket Vlogs Patreon, where essentially I'd be putting the videos out early. I try to upload Sundays, but I'd be putting them up as soon as I finish shooting and editing. And then um, the LDRS one I plan on taking about a month worth, because so, I'm doing one section of it a week, so it'll probably be either three or four videos every Sunday. And I was thinking about doing a Patreon, so you can join the Patreon for a couple bucks a month or whatever and um, you get access to the whole LDRS video series from the get-go. So, if that's something you're interested in, we'll say five bucks a month, let me know. And um, yeah, at any rate, thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.